Hello, Chitku people. I welcome you all to score 360 out of 360 in Eat Bio within 250 days. And today we are going to talk about the Human Genome Project, uh, which is the second last topic of a molecular basis of inheritance. Actually, it's the last topic itself. And if possible, if possible, would be merging this with DNA fingerprinting as well. If not, then it will be given as a separate video. Okay? I'll try my best. Now, over here, uh, what did we cover in our previous session? So we spoke about the regulation of gene and lac opera and I hope that you all had fun uh, about say seeing that particular video because it was a very interesting topic and we covered it in a most graceful nature also. So every bit of things are being covered from that particular topic. So you can try for yourself to try giving uh, shots to different questions that you randomly find on internet. Try it out and see whether you're able to answer or not. Now if you want the period for the same children you can join our WhatsApp channel also where we, the neat people, are only there. And the number of questions this chapter holds uh, is basically six the previous year. But before that, it was 10. Before that, it was again six and again nine. So this year could give you a more number of questions from this chapter. And obviously, six into four, four for all the correct answers. 24 marks you cannot avoid, OK? 10 into 4, 40 marks can you avoid? No. In an uh, exam like this, each single mark is very 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 important yes and with this did you do the homework honest opinion did someone did the homework or not so let's see which enzyme will be produced in a cell if there is a nonsense mutation in the lac y gene so first of all you should be knowing the sequence of the genes so first gene that we have is lac z then we have lac y and then we have Lac A. I always said, remember like this, Zyada. So when there is Zyada lactose, then only this will get active. So Zya is basically the sequence. B this, this one, Z stands for beta galactosidase. Remember? Y stands for permease. And A stands for mm, transacetylase. Cool? Cool children. Now, it is said that there is some nonsense mutation. <laughs> nonsense mutation as in there is a point mutation. Point mutation as in there is a, uh, there's a change in a single base pair. So, for example, if the base pair was uh, UGG or something like that and now there is a single point mutation over here and it has now turned to UGA. <gasps> and UGA children is a stop codon. So, all of, uh, all of a sudden, a normal thing that was happening is now stopped because there's a mutation over here and basically it's a stop codon. So in the case of nonsense mutation, there will be in general also I'm telling you, it's an example of point mutation. Nonsense mutation is a type of point mutation. So over here what happens is that earlier termination happens. Okay, there's a stop codon and which is why the termination happens earlier. So now if you think that mutation is over here in this particular gene and over here the termination has taken place. Okay, the termination has taken place. That means only one gene we got rest of the two genes we did not get okay so permease and transacetylase will we get them no if the gene is not obviously transcribed we won't be getting it so these things we don't get but do we get beta galactosidase yes children we definitely get beta galactosidase so which enzyme will be produced in a cell if there is a nonsense mutation in lac y gene so obviously this and this are you Huh. This and this would not be produced, only this will be produced. So, beta galactosidase is the answer. This came in NEET 2013. Okay? Works. Now, going ahead. The Human Genome Project, that is our today's topic. So, it's a very boring thing that I found in NCIT and I'm to very honest over here. So, I thought I'll segregate a bit and try to make it a bit, at least a bit interesting. Okay? So, Human Genome Project was done. As to someone said that we have to find out the whole sequence of the DNA. Why? Why is it that necessary? Because if we are able to find that out, then probably we know if this is a sequence of DNA, that from here to here, this codes for some protein, that is protein number A. And this codes for some other protein, that is protein number B. And suppose, suppose, it's because of some problem over here that this particular protein is not being made and because of this particular problem, some disease is being caused. Then probably we can find ways to cure this by putting some DNA sequence over here, by making the body produce that protein again. Something at least could be done if we know the sequence. 
right so that was the ultimate aim of the human genome project where there are so many other goals i'll be talking about that but for your understanding i just spoke about it okay so when did it start it started in the year 1990 is it important ma'am yes it is important okay we need to remember every small detail even though the number of questions that i saw from this particular topic was not very high but i've also seen that people tend to lose marks when it comes to this topic okay so obviously certain topics does not give you questions always but when they give when they give people will be like we didn't study this because no questions came so that is the thing we have to be very much prepared okay so it started in the year 1990 and ended in 2003 so you can calculate almost it went up to 13 years it went up to 13 years for doing the complete process okay and now coordinated it was coordinated by us department of energy and the national institute of health two people coordinated us department of energy and the national institute of health after that so many companies came in from japan and china and things like that all of them came they helped in the whole process of the human genome project now what was the primary goal the primary goal was to sequence 3 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs that is our whole genome okay 3 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs was to be sequenced now they said okay we can sequence it but the problem is each nucleotide for example if this is a sequence a t g c t a g whatever is it okay to sequence one particular nucleotide okay one nucleotide has one nitrogen base that's why i noticed it is not like a is a nucleotide no a is a nitrogen base but obviously a is attached to a new to whole structure that forms the nucleotide that's why i said okay so to sequence one nucleotide Three dollars were required. So now, we, how many nucleotides do we need to sequence in all over? Ten to the power nine. Three into ten to the power nine. So if you calculate it into three, you almost are spending how many billions children? You are spending nine billion dollars, which is why it was also declared as a mega project because it is not one or two rupees. One or two rupees also has its own value, but over here, over here, it is three dollars. Okay, three US dollars, which was costing way too much, but still people didn't lose what people studied because. this particular study might be worth their whole life because you might be saving a lot of lives if you know about this whole thing okay so started in the year 1990 went up to 2003 that is it went up to 13 years for one chromosome chromosome number 1 it ended in chromo som number 1 the sequencing of it ended in 2006 that is one extra in zone information that is given in your ncert and also 24 24 chromosomes were found the x and the y were later to be sequenced okay now no 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 x and y makes the 26 chromosome pair okay so yes they went up to 13 years coordinated by us department of energy and national institute of health okay now the primary goal was to what sequence 3 into 10 to the power 9 base pair but the problem was 3 bill sorry 3 us dollars were being used to sequence at least one nucleotide so 3 into this particular thing you got 9 billion dollars were spent for the human genome project which is why it was declared as a mega project okay cool works and now what were the important goal of hgp or human genome product first thing project not product identify all the approximately 20000 to 25000 genes in the human dna so it was assumed that 25000 genes were there approximately in the human dna and it was to be identified with the help of this particular project okay now determine the sequence of 3 billion uh, chemical base pairs that make up human dna so we know the 3 billion 3 to the power 9 basically 3 billion base pairs are there to determine the sequence of it was another thing okay now store this information in database now once you you have all identified the genes the 25000 genes and you have identified the sequence of the 3 billion chemical base pairs and everything after that you want to store this information obviously in databases and improve the tools for data analysis once you are stored you also need to retrieve it at some point of time right so for that you need to improve the tools for what data analysis now transfer related technologies to other sectors it was also a goal so they didn't keep it to themselves rather than that they used it to sell it to other places also which could be uh, basically helpful for them okay and the other areas other industrial sectors for example health sector was utilizing it for their own good benefit which would later benefit us also okay for their studies but which would later benefit us also now address the ethical legal and social issues that is 
LC okay that may arise from the project so important goal of HGP was all of this thing they maintain they made sure that they did all of this thing identified all the approximately 25,000 genes okay determine the sequence of 3 billion base pairs and then store the information in the database and have a good tool for data analysis and also transfer all the information to the other sectors or other industries which were working on the same as well and then address they also needed to make sure that they are addressing all the ethical legal and everything social issues that were arising because of this particular thing not everyone agrees to the same right some people have uh, this religious notion that we should not be doing this we should not be doing this so that is also there so everything to tackle everything they, that was in their goal now were human the only ones who got studied is it like that no many non-human model organisms such as bacteria yeast uh, uh, what say sonoro Ditus elegans, a free living non pathogenic nematode, Drosophila, the fruit fly, plants like rice and Arabi, Dopsis, etc., have also been sequenced. Okay, so you can remember the names of at least few bacteria yeast. Okay, Senor habitus. This elegance, I always tend to mess it up. Okay, and it's a nematode. Nematode basically is a round worm. Okay, a round worm we have studied, no? Vicaria bancrofti, Ascaris is a round worm. So they all come under this category only. Okay, so this guy also, also, comes, also comes under this category only. Now Drosophila is there, then plants like rice and uh, Arabidopsis is also there. Okay, which were sequenced. Now going ahead. I hope you got the gist of all the things that I am telling over here. Now, what was the salient features? What did they actually find after doing the human genome project? So that is also one thing. How did they actually sequence everything? I'll come to that. But I need you to remember these many points, which is given entirely in your NCRT. And we cannot miss each, any one. Okay, so basically, let's start. First thing, the human genome contains 3164.7 million base pair. How many children? 3164.7 million base pair. The human genome as in, what do you mean by genome? The whole set of genetic information that we are having, the whole chromosomes, everything's genetic information combined together, you call it as genome. So genome is the largest unit that you could study, okay? Now the average gene consists of 3 thousand bases but the size is very greatly with the largest known human gene being dystrophin at 2.4 billion bases so basically you know that the dna basically has segments and these segments are known as what genes so there could be gene 1 gene 2 gene 3 and things like that they are saying the average gene basically they consist of 300 base pairs so there were 80 gc like three sorry three thousand of them were there okay how many three thousand of them were there for most of the cases but so the average average basis i'll say it's basically 3000 base pairs but there's an example given in your ncrt that is of dystrophin dystrophin i hope the spelling is dystrophia yeah. dystrophin how many bases were there children for this particular gene okay for this particular gene how many was there 2.4 million bases 2.4 for one particular gene that was coding for dystrophin that was helping in the production of dystrophin was having 2.4 billion base pairs so this is the first point this is the second point over here now the total number of genes is estimated at 30,000 so initially it was obviously over here identify all the approximately 25,000 genes in the human DNA that was their goal but later on they got to know that your total number of genes is estimated at 30,000 much lower than the previous estimations they had previous estimation as well that is of 80,000 or 1 lakh 40,000 genes it was not like that and almost all nucleotide bases are exactly same in all people that is 99.9% .9 of the nucleotide bases base pairs if you see are same in all people can you imagine me and you everyone having this 99 99.9% .9 same thing this 1% difference is there and that 1% difference makes us very different from each other can you believe that well that is the actual case so the total number of genes if you're asked total number of genes is how many children 30,000 okay and we all are 99.9% .9 safe the functions are unknown for over 50% of the discovered genes so over of this 50% if you see we have no idea about their functions Okay, 50% that is basically 15,000 genes. We do not have any idea what is their function. Now, repeated, okay, less than 2% of the genome codes for proteins. So, 
basically this is the whole genome okay the whole genome is there if we talk about the whole genome in that less than 2% of genes are actually coding for watrin proteins rest all are just repeated sequence nothing else just all are what repeated sequence they are not coding for anything so only 2% less than 2% is said less than 2% of the genome codes for the protein so we have this many the 3 30 uh, 3164.7 billion base pairs okay they will obviously code for genes but how many of them actually code less than 2% of the total genes okay if you combine them they are all giving out certain certain genes okay they are all giving out certain certain genes and these genes if we combine them together only 2% of these genes are actually coding for proteins rest all of them they are might be not coding for anything okay now repetitive sequence make a very large portion of the human genome so office over here you see that basically repeated sequence as in ATG, ATG, ATG. This is repeated sequence, which is not coding for anything. So it's saying that repeated sequence make a large part of our human genome. Okay, repetitive sequence are stretches of DNA sequence that are repeated many times, sometimes hundred to thousand times. They are thought to have no different, di no direct coding function, but they shed light on chromosome structure, dynamics, and evolution as well. So they actually do not code for anything, as I said. But obviously, since some people or some group of organisms might have these many number of repeated sequence, and some other group of organism might have other number of uh, like number here. If it is hundred here, it could be thousand. And with this, probably we could understand the evolutionary relationships as well. With if we have a deeper learning about it okay now chromosome 1 has the most genes that is 2968 okay here the average basis were the dystrophin you're talking about the basis in dystrophin's case you're talking about the basis that these many bases are required to form dystrophin over here i'm talking about the genes the number of genes which are there so chromosome 1 which is there It has the most amount of genes and the genes is basically how many? 2968. It's 2968 number of genes. Now, and the fewest is Y. Y chromosome, you know, Y chromosome is chuttu a chromosome. In the case of males, males have Y chromosome. So, Y chromosome is very chuttu. So, we are expecting it to have lesser number of genes. How many number of genes? Just 231 number of genes. This is the number of genes children, not the number of base pairs. The base pairs, basically, if I say it comes together to form genes. So, obviously, they might have lesser base pairs also. Otherwise, they would have obviously been here okay so no this is the number of base pair this is the highest number this is the biggest gene that is having okay i cannot say it's the biggest uh yeah i can say it's the biggest gene okay which has 2.4 million base pairs that is of dystrophin now over here i'm counting the number of genes so on the, on the number of, uh, on chromosome number one i have 2968 number of genes not the number of base pairs number of genes okay so for example if this is a chromosome i have this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten how many two nine six eight genes over here and each genes obviously will have their own 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 base pairs this is the largest gene that i have seen okay now, next thing, scientists have identified about 1.4 million locations where single base DNA differences differences occur in humans. What do you mean by that? So, for that, we need to make this means single nucleotide. This is what single nucleotide polymorphism. Okay, what do you understand by that? For example, if this is a DNA sequence, I have A, G, C over here. This is another DNA sequence of another person probably. Okay, and here instead of A, it is G. Rest everything is the same. So over here, you see there is only single nucleotide that has been changed okay now if i am saying okay one person has this second person has this okay the third person again has this the third person again has this okay probably the fourth person might also have this 
okay so basically there is morphism there is morphism happening there is a difference okay there is a difference happening in each of them i call this difference as dna polymorphism dna polymorphism what do you mean by dna poly poly means many morphism means form so the single cns dna strand has multiple forms over here there can be mutation over there can be there had one change single nucleotide change has happened which is why this has come now if i say that more than 1% of the population more than 1% of the population has this has this change in their dna you now can call that this is dna polymorphism you now can call that this is dna polymorphism any random change if for example if for example only this person has this change okay these people do not have this change okay so i cannot say that it's dna polymorphism it happened in this person but it is not transmitted to the next person nothing is happening it's just them in them it is not occurring in more than one person of the population this is cannot be considered as dna polymorphism so you might be thinking ma'am mutation and single nucleotide polymorphism is the same thing children listen mutation is when for example there is a change okay there is a change and this change is basically causing a big trouble for example ggc is co coding for something else which is very toxic for us and now this particular person is diseased this particular person is diseased okay this is known as a mutation this is known as a mutation because this is going to cause a trouble later on okay so single nucleotide polymorphism okay i'll say single nucleotide polymorphism is polymorphism when multiple people have this change okay when multiple people have this change and they are all normal in the case of mutation yes here also single nucleotide could change and cause mutation but over here it's a problem and not everyone will have it the person who has it might die as well might die as well so i don't want to make you so much confused just for your understanding understand this very important term that is dna polymorphism which can be of one type that is snp single nucleotide polymorphism where just a single nucleotide is being changed from here if a ug was there and now it is changing to a u c and few people have this it's not this particular person but few more people have this you can now call it polymorphism you can now call it polymorphism and since this is happening only because of change in one nucleotide i call this as single nucleotide polymorphism okay if it is happening in more than one person people then only i can call it polymorphism fine now one more very important thing so in human beings we definitely have single nucleotide polymorphism which makes us different okay otherwise everyone would be have been the same now for example i have polymorphism over here some other person also have the same polymorphism some other person also have the same polymorphism and now you are thinking that we all should be looking the similar we all should be looking the similar but i am have to make you understand this thing does it actually happen just over here no for example for example if i extend this dna out here okay now here also it was ac ac okay now here if i assume that this person has acu and i have ac g but on the other hand if i talk about the next person that def person definitely has a u c but that person does not have acg instead of that that person have acc this makes me different from this person who was similar to me in this aspect it also had c i also had c we were similar over here but if you think here we are not similar that is also an example of single nucleotide polymorphism so in one strand of dna there could be multiple areas where single nucleotide polymorphism is happening and now this this thing that is there could be happening with someone else which is why i am calling it polymorphism because because it is there in more than 1% of population so i can have the same type of polymorphism with another person in this particular location but there are different different location and for different different location you have different different changes as well 
and not everyone will have exact same just like how I am having over here it's not like I have AUC over here okay fine AUC is there now if I am ACG over here then this person will also have ACG it's not possible in that case we would have been the same people we would have been exactly same so single nucleotide polymorphism can happen anywhere in your DNA there can be multiple times that it happens okay it is totally different from mutation in mutations yes the nucleotide is changing but that particular change cannot be transferred to a lot of people because mutations mostly mostly it is uh, going to cause diseases. some mutations are not going to cause any trouble but still okay <sighs> can I take a screenshot of this if you're if you want to understand this Okay, because it, it, would, it would be lost when I change it. Now, over here, scientists have identified about 1.4 million locations where single base DNA differences occur in humans. 1.4 million locations, children. 1.4 million locations where point mutation has happened. So, in one location, probably mine is different from other location. Some other person's is different. Okay. But we are not changing. We are sorry. We do not have the same type of nucleotides. So, this information promises to revolutionize the process of finding chromosome locations for disease associated sequences and tracing human history. So, okay. So, this is done. And then they are saying that all this information basically will be helping in what? In finding out any sort of diseases that could be there. Okay. Because we have already, yes, we have already stated all the parts of the human genome we we covered all the base pairs how many number of base pairs are there what gene codes for what but yes 50 percent of the function is still unknown unknown but still we can find it anytime right that can be possible with with the techniques that we have today yes so this were the salient features of human genome project children how many base pairs do we have 3164.7 million base pairs the average number of base pairs for each gene that we have is 3000 base pairs the longest or the yeah the largest gene size is basically 2.4 million base pairs that is for dystrophin now total number of genes if we say it's 30000 but only 50 percent of the gene was studied okay until now we do not know the function of the rest of the genes now less than two percent of the genes that we are seeing okay if we have these many genes less than two percent of it is actually coding for proteins rest of the other things might be just repeated sequence and these repeated sequence are not coding for anything okay these repeated sequence are not coding for anything now chromosome number one it's said to be have highest number of genes that is two nine six eight number of genes whereas chromosome number five chutu, chutu chromosome it just has 231 gene set okay and we have also studied one more thing that scientists have said that 1.4 million locations are there where there is single nucleotide differences rest everything could be same okay but because of these changes over here these many locations are there some other the place we might be different from each other because of these nucleotide differences okay done fine now let's see how what was the methodology behind it how were they actually able to find what the dna sequencing of while doing the human genome project how did they come to the conclusion that these many base pairs are there or these many sequences are there or these many genes are there okay let's see that so one approach focused on identify all the genes that expressed as rna okay so one approach was to find the regions for example if this is a dna this is coding for something and obviously this forms the rna rest of the other things are not getting transcribed Okay, rest, rest of the things are not getting transcripts, so I'm not learning that. Okay, I'm not going to sequence that. So, one approach was to sequence all those area which are going to express the RNA and this, uh, this was referred to as express sequence tag. What was it referred to? It was known as expressed sequence tags. Okay, ESTs. It was known as express sequence tax. Okay. Now, after that, the other took the blind approach of simply sequencing the whole set of genome that contain all the coding and non-coding sequences. So, we know we definitely have coding and non-coding. We have exons, introns and everything. So, everything all together was studied and this was known as sequence annotation. So over here only the express the exons were being studied that was it, that's why it was known as expressed sequence tags and over here the whole sequence was studied that way that's why it was known as sequence annotation so either the, either of these techniques could have been used for dna sequencing either this or this 
Now, what was done? First thing, the total DNA from a cell is isolated and converted into fragments of relatively smaller sizes. So, the whole DNA is taken. Now, obviously, we cannot run the whole DNA together. So, what do we do? If we cut it into fragments with the help of enzymes. Okay. So, first is isolation. Second is cutting them into smaller fragments. Now, then it is cloned in suitable host. Now, if one person is there, okay, I have a DNA strand and if I am allocated, okay, Jasmine will be studying this thing. And if I keep on studying, obviously, I will be taking a lot of time for sequencing this particular thing. It is a time taking process. But on the other hand, if I try to make clones of it and now have multiple clones and now I ask, hey, you also, please do help me, R. Or Nisha, help me, R. Please help me find the sequence for this thing. It will be really helpful. So, what do you do? Basically, after taking isol after doing the isolation, after cutting them into fragments, it was cloned in a suitable host. Okay. How? With the help of a vector. So, vector is basically the chromosome. So, vector that is being used in the case of bacteria and yeast, which is given in your NCRT, is this thing. So, for bacteria, it was bacterial artificial chromosome. So, something like this was taken from bacteria. It was being cut over here at this particular location. And then, the DNA that we needed was inserted. And then, the whole genome basically was put inside a bacteria. Obviously, inside the bacteria, this will make copies. Because it will use bacteria's replication mechanism to make copies. Now, I have... Now not like this it does not look like this now i will be having multiple copies over here each having my dna the dna that i am studying later i can use this particular dna strand and give it to other people to study yeah so what was the uh, vector that was used bacterial artificial chromosome that is bac or yeast artificial chromosome that is yac bacterial artificial chromosome was inserted into bacteria whereas yeast artificial chromosome was inserted into virus for cloning so, then it is cloned in suitable host. Host is what? Bacteria or yeast. In speci using specialized vectors so that it results in replication or amplification of each piece of DNA. I see now amplification is happening over here. Amplification as in you are increasing the number of things. Okay. Amplifying things. Now, that is subsequently could be used for sequences yeast. Now, the fragments were sequenced using automated DNA sequences. So, now we had machines and everything which worked on Frederick Sanger's principle of DNA, what's a sequencing. Okay, Frederick Sanger was a person who worked on DNA sequencing. He used his own method of DNA sequencing. Okay, so on the same principle of machine also about DNA sequences, which were also there were used for finding out the sequence of each fragment. Okay, so what do you mean by sequence of each fragment? Basically, I wanted to find out whether A is there, after that T is there, or G is there, or C is there, whatever the sequence of the DNA is there, I needed to find it out. And this was used with the help of uh, DNA sequences, which worked on the principle of Frederick Sanger. Now, these sequences were then arranged based on the same overlapping regions present in them. Now, one problem is there, obviously, if you see, this is a DNA strand, this is a DNA strand, this is a DNA strand, okay? that I got. This is one, this can be three, this can be two. How do I arrange them? I do not know their order. I do not know their order. So, what is the best way to do that? So, basically, if I assume that this is the case, where the sequence is A, T, G, C, C, T, A, G, G, C. Okay. Now, suppose I have cut from, okay, one I have cut from here. Okay, so now I'll be getting A, G, G, C as one sequence. Cool. Now, if I'm cutting something from here, okay, wait, from here. Hmm? So, instead of cutting from here, I cut it from, just a second. Oh. Okay. This was the first thing that I got. Now, this is the second thing that I am getting. C, C, T, A, G, G, C. This is the second thing that I am getting. Now, the next thing that I am getting is G, C, C, T. Over here, if I am cutting from this. So, what will, the, what will be the third one? G, 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 sorry, G, G, C, G, C, C, T. And with this information, if I am rubbing this off, I can get to understand that basically this might be coming first because I find this over here 
this particular sequence that you see is exactly like this. So I can write C C T A G G C. That is one thing. Okay. Now the next thing, if I see over here, G G C is being repeated over here and here. So probably just after this, after G G C, I might have G C C T. Agree? Now if you see this and this C C T A G G C C T A G G, then what it is? Uh, G G. Then C G C G C T. Same thing is happening over here as well. So basically, what am I trying to say is that if you if you cut the sequences with overlapping ends, now these are overlapping in both the sequences. In this sequence, this particular sequence is overlapping, and in this way, I would be able to find the order of them as well. Okay, so that is exactly given over here. These sequences were then arranged based on some overlapping regions present in them. So that was the thing. Okay, now if you if since it is gone. And if you want to remember it for long, I can write it once more over here, so that you remember it. Okay? So it is A T G G C T A G G R A T C. Okay? Now, the first sequence I am going to cut from here. So the sequence will be like this. T A G G A, and this sequence I'm to going to cut till here, until here. Okay, so this is the first sequence that I got. Now the second sequence, second sequence I'm going to cut from here. So the second sequence is G G C T A G G, and I'm going to end it over. Again, I'm going to end it somewhere here. Okay, so it will be like this. That is the second sequence. Now the third sequence, if I am assuming that it, I have cut it from which particular portion? Probably I have taken from here and I have directly made made a cut over here. Okay, I have taken from here or probably here and I have made a cut over there. Okay, not this. I have made a cut over there. So at this particular point of time, what will I get? Let's see. So it will be C T A G G A T. Now let's see for the overlapping regions. So T A G G, I see it's overlapping over here. So I understand that this might be the first thing. So I'm writing G G C T A G G. Again, I am finding T A G G with C over here. C T T A G and then A T over here. Now this and this, you tell me, isn't it the same from here to here? Isn't it the same? And that's how I found the sequence of things. Okay, that is overlapping. So these things that you see over here, these are overlapping things. Okay, they are overlapping regions, which helps me find the sequence. So we'll repeat it once more. First thing, DNA sequencing can be done of only the sequences that are coding for these genes. Okay, now when you're doing like that, it is known as expressed expressed sequence stacks. Okay, now if you're doing for the whole DNA, you call it sequence annotation. Either way, what do you do, children? You take the DNA, it is isolated, cut into pieces. Okay, and now you are putting it into a uh, vector. Okay, this vector is later inserted into something else, host. Okay, in the host, this will amplify the DNA which is there. It will amplify itself, and now we can other people can also sequence it for their own good. Okay, now the frequent the fragments are sequenced on with the help of the DNA sequences, which works on Frederick Sanger's method of DNA sequencing. And now the sequences which were then taken, they are arranged in order with the help of the overlapping regions. With the help of the overlapping regions, and tada, then we have the whole set of DNA. So yeah, that is there. So this was the thing that we wanted to study from Human Genome Project. We'll just have a quick revision. So from it started in the year 1990, went up to 2003. That is 13 years. But chromosome number one. Uh, was totally sequenced in the year 2006. Okay, going ahead, it was coordinated by U.S. Department of Energy and National Institute of Health. Apart from that, there were so many countries that were involved. The primary aim was to uh, sequence all of them, and for that, it needed nine billion donors, which is <laughs> dollars, which is why it was known as Mega Project. Now, these were the things that were the important goal for HGP. 
okay they wanted to uh, analyze all the sequences the 3 billion base pairs they wanted to know all the 250,000 sorry 25,000 genes that were there in the human DNA they wanted to store this they want to analyze this they wanted to improve their tools they wanted to give it to different industries uh, okay and all of these things now apart from that what are the salient features you know all the salient features we already discussed it apart from that how did they actually sequence it they either use this technique or this technique sequence annotation is when you uh, sequence all of these things together and the other one is sequence uh, express sequence tags where you are just sequencing the ones that express their rna okay now these were the steps that were being used okay the total dna from a cell is isolated it is converted into fragments and then it is cloned in suitable host and everything 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 okay and after amplification is done and the fragments are then sequenced then they are arranged with the help of the overlapping regions now Express the first question that is over here. You have to try answering this question. Okay. Express sequence tags refers to what? Novel DNA sequences gene expressed as RNA polypeptide expression DNA polymorphism. Need 2019 question. Okay. Now next thing. Identify the correct order of organization of genetic material from largest to smallest. Genome chromosome gene nucleotide chromosome genome nucleotide gene. Chromosome gene genome nucleotide genome chromosome nucleotide gene again. Okay, now third one satellite DNA is important because it is what do you mean by satellite DNA children? I said that there is repeated sequences. Okay, this repeated sequences when they are repeated again and again, again and again, again and basically you call this as satellite DNA. You call them as satellite DNA and it definitely shows high degree of polymorphism. Okay, I'll tell the answer here itself because over here when you do the repetition, there are certain chances that there could be changes in one nucleotide and this thing could be found in other organisms also. This thing, the same thing could be found in other organisms and it can be more than 1% of the population that have this type of change in them. Okay, so satellite DNA is the one that have repeated DNA sequences and they definitely show what high degree of polymorphism. Okay. Fine. And same degree of polymorphism in an individual that means each cell which has the DNA will also have the same degree of polymorphism. This cell will also have, this cell will also have the same thing. Okay. That is what they mean by this. So they show high degree of polymorphism in population. So in population obviously they are showing different, different ways. Okay. All of them might be having different, different nucleotides. That is this change is there or this change will be accumulated in lots and lots of people. Okay, this could be there in one person, second person, third person, fourth person, fifth person. So, this is polymorphism that is happening. Okay. Now, yes. So, the answer for this question becomes D. Shows high degree of polymorphism in population and also the same degree of polymorphism in an individual which is heritable from parents to children. So, this is heritable from parents to the children. Okay, satellite DNA is the one that has so many repeated sequences. Now going ahead, the fourth one. Uh -huh. The fourth one is not from this topic, but you can still try. The codons causing chain termination are. Do you remember the codons? If you remember the codons, do let me know. Also one more question. Anticodon occurs in what? tRNA, mRNA, rRNA, DNA. This is also a question which is not taught today, but you might already know this. Okay, now if you're done, let's try doing these questions. Express sequence tags refers to what? Only the genes that are expressed as RNA. When you are going to sequence them, okay, that is referred to as express sequence tags. So, this is the correct answer. Now, identify the correct order of organization of genetic material from largest to smallest. So, largest is obviously genome, okay. Obviously, it is genome. Now, genome will be having chromosomes, Genome consists of chromosomes, right? These chromosomes basically are made up of lots of DNA and this DNA has genes. And these genes are made, made up of what? Nucleotides. So, your first option becomes the answer. Okay? Now, satellite DNA is important because it shows high degree of polymorphism in population and also the same degree of polymorphism in an individual which is heritable from parents to children even though it's very very what's a difficult uh, to understand question but still does not code for proteins and is same in all members of population no it is cannot be same in all members of population there will be some changes in some nucleotide in all different people codes for enzymes no children it does not code for any enzyme codes for protein needed in cell cycle no children they are mostly non-coding protein non-coding genes okay they're not code for proteins they're just repeated sequences now, the codons that help in chain termination, you have UAG, UGA, UAA. You have three sequences, UAG, 
uga u a okay so you have three sequences which are uh, the stop codons okay all of them together what do you call them stop codons now anticodon occurs in trna mrna rrna or dna anticodon basically for example if this is the mrna there will be a codon over here okay just a second just a second just a second if this is the mrna with a u g and things like that then there will be a trna which will be having anticodon loop and here you will be having opposite of it so instead of a what will you be having you might have u sorry 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 yeah u instead of a it will u will be a and instead of this it will be g sorry c so this is what anticodon and this is what children this is the codon okay so this is the trna works going ahead i have one question for you and this question is from dna fingerprinting try your luck and do let me know the answer you can just refer to the ncrt and see if you're able to understand or else you know right i'm here i'll try to make you understand whatever things are there which you didn't understand even i feel there's not too much justice given to this topic but yeah in whatever way is possible i'll try to make you understand it again yeah so that's all my dear little champions and if you think that this particular video was useful then definitely do not forget to subscribe to the channel and have a really really good day bye bye god bless you take care